AZ's Frostline streamer event has been going on and we were able to get early access during week one and week two. Here are our thoughts about Daisy Frostline so far so you know what you're buying. I think Daisy Frostline's map is just a beautiful landscape. There is snow everywhere else. And I call it like a kind of dirty wonderland. It, it looks so <laughs> pretty. The snow isn't 100% crisp everywhere. There is a lot of dirt and there is a lot of trash all over the place in those cities. There really is. And I think you sort of touched on it that it's not clear snow this is snow that you would see in that particular region it starts off with little bits here and there and the deeper inland you go it obviously picks up more as the cold gets worse as well and the thing that i like about it is what you said it's it's dirty there's a roughness to it there's just so much there there's rubbish everywhere there are tires everywhere people have ran and this place has been left alone and abandoned for quite some time definitely a nice mix of Kind of that dirty snow look up until you get the full snow up higher. I did notice that some of the uh, the terrain graphics were still a little bit rough uh, in that they were blocky, but I'm sure that's going to get ironed out. I know that was always a problem with uh, some of the other uh, winter mods and, and snow-related mods is getting that blocky look right where it transitions from dirt to snow. But uh, overall, the I would say the atmosphere and ambiance is, is right on the money. Speaking about the atmosphere and ambiance, I loved how everywhere felt like it was a rush, like I always said. People picked up and laughed. Things were laughed. It looked kind of like some of the smaller villages actually looked like people lived there and were fishing. Because you got closer to, you know, the coastline and you could actually see, you know, piles of crates and other miscellaneous stuff. And I actually enjoyed that when you went into houses, the interiors actually changed. Yeah, it's sort of world building. As you say, a lot of the coastal towns sort of focused more on the fishing type of look and the lifestyle. Whereas if you go deeper than land, you get more like chicken coops, for example, you get tractors and you get more farm looking assets as well. And you can actually see it as you travel through the land, just how much it changes. And it's little things like that that build the world in a completely unique way. And Dump, you hit on a point that, that really struck me was the changes on the insides of some of the buildings and structures. You know, obviously they're carrying forward some of the same uh, building assets from DayZ. However, they did uh, rearrange where the furniture is or make uh, adjustments to both the structure and the textures of the buildings, and they feel more lived in. That was one of the things with DayZ I always thought odd, and I wasn't sure if it was just after a certain number of hours you start just kind of you memorize them and you aren't paying attention to the way the buildings feel but it felt like you know somebody wasn't really living in here and in Sakal in the buildings they're a little bit busier there's a little bit more furniture there's less just open space and it just looks and feels more like lived in structures where everybody just had to bail yeah and I kind of said in my review as well that the way they've sort of included some of the old buildings as they were coupled with the new buildings now what happens is you walk into to a place and you don't know where you're going to have to look because there are different spawn locations there's different furniture so by adding and keeping right. in the old assets and adding completely brand new ones as well all the insides completely refurbished redone everything you have that sense of variety that you don't really have on the other maps yeah, and I think you hit it on the nose right there. The refreshed feeling wasn't only just the map on the outside, it was the mm -hmm. interiors like you both are talking about. Not only the changes in the furniture that being knocked over, the storytelling, but the fact that I don't know 100% when I walk up to a house how the furniture is going to be arranged. Well, at least not yet. But it was a good feeling knowing that when I went into a house, I wasn't sure what kind of layout I was going to get, so I didn't know where to loot. I think new players are going to enjoy it just as much because there are going to be differences between the maps maps when it comes to the static buildings that they see on the other maps as well. One of the other things I actually enjoyed about that is you hit on the head, the new buildings and static objects they added to the map that are completely custom. The geothermal plant, the Rata Dome, I've even seen concrete barriers. Yeah, because we were actually on the map together when we checked it out before this discussion and we came across like a smaller geothermal plant. There was lots of concrete blocks that you could walk across next to giant silos and all of it was just brand new. There was not a single reused asset that I could see there and this was just an insignificant part of the map. This wasn't like a major town or a major point of interest. It's just some little side of a duck. They definitely did a lot of detail thinking and planning on this and especially really in the time that they they took to build it, which it seems like, you know, it went pretty quick. They did get a lot more detail than I expected. I really enjoy these kind of static elements, but the hot springs 
really were quite a treat because I thought they were going to be this place where I was just going to be blistering hot the minute I stepped near them. But it actually became kind of a nice reprieve from the winter cold. But, you know, with all these beautiful things on the map, one of the things I actually didn't like was I was going to promise that I could jump across these ice sheets. Even if I wanted to transverse from one island to the other, I, I can't. I will always fall in the water, even if I'm doing my best, you know, acrobatics or parkour, parkour. And I didn't try it, but how uh, dangerous is it to fall in the water? extremely like if you get too far out from the land and fall in the water you can climb back on the ice sheet but those ice sheets are like rigid cold and yes boats were nice to find but the fact that they're really easy to shoot like i think two or three bullets makes them sink which i get they're made of rubber i know that they can easily sink kind of stunk one of the problems with that as well like i don't mind that it's difficult if there's a high risk to reward ratio and i feel as though traveling to different islands now there's not really anything on the other islands worth that risk you might build a base there and that's fine but if you do you're also going to struggle to get there because as you say boats are not easy to find and when you do find them it takes quite a while and it just seems like there could have been more incentive to travel to the other islands because they just don't really have a lot to do on them and you mentioned base building one thing that i didn't do but in looking around um and i'm interested in your experiences seems like the resources for base building were quite diminished from the other you know traditional maps so did either of you guys um try to do any kind of base building or or even resource collection like that yeah, I helped somebody build their base. They had the nails. I couldn't find any. I did look. The nails were very difficult to find. But sharpening stones, hatchet, that was fairly simple to find. But you can make some cool bases, and you can also make them in caves as well, which is quite a nice addition. So aside from all the changes to the look and feel and the, like we said, the atmosphere and ambiance, um, you've got the cold. And as one that I've never been a big fan of the winter maps in the past, um, this certainly didn't disappoint in my dislike of that. Uh, you know, that's another factor. Now, you, you don't only have food and water to fight with, but you've got your temperature and then you've got the temperature of the food. So suddenly it's like, oh, great, I've got all this food. Oh, it's all frozen. I got to figure out how to thaw it out and I got to make sure I can go build a fire every 10 or 15 minutes to keep myself heated up. Don't let Red's the silliness of not like <laughs> winter maps this way you folks you can act to frost your food quite easily when it's next to a fire or now you can attach your food to the fire grate or inside of your cooking pot to warm it up even quicker do note folks when it stops being frozen or chilly your food will start to take damage so just keep your eye on it so pull right off but the mechanics are good they rework the entire player temperature system to be far more dynamic and easier to understand i think the insulation of your clothing on the character overall affects how many plus symbols you can get is a huge boom for players to always be trying to wear the best insulation clothing gear they can because they want to get as many pluses because from what i have counted and folks this is not an exact estimate you could have anywhere from eight to 16 minutes of a heat buff before you start to lose your temperature and then have to make another fire and you probably can go even longer ah well see the thing i figured out about this was when you first start you will be going fire to fire that's just one of those things you know you do it in other maps or the cold maps it's just the way it goes however when you learn sakal a bit more and you learn a bit more about the map what you find is you don't actually need to go from fire to fire the map is designed in such a way that when you learn how to utilize what is there you can just keep going you can heat yourself with food you can heat yourself with torches you don't have to be stationary that is it's a cool way to go and it's a way to defrost certain food and everything but even with food it defrosts over time with your body heat so everything is sort of designed to give you that choice once you get better you will not be standing around fires for like five minutes waiting to defrost everything but as a brand new player that is probably the way you're gonna go yeah and one of the things i found really awesome was there's also some new pieces of canned food out there we found canned crab meat I was super excited about <laughs> it. It's kind of silly. It's just crab meat. But still, like, you know, nah, 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 nah. I'm a crab. Uh, they have billboards for crab meat, too. It's kind of funny. Um, but it was cool seeing it. I even found a sea captain's pico with best insulation. It looked really cool. The fact is, is they added a lot into this map 
And they added even more functionality, such as being able to eat the snow and uh, maybe there's a weird side effect to it. Yeah, that is one of the worst experiences I've had. I, I actually, I, I noticed that you could eat the snow. I tried to eat some snow. I stayed away from the yellow snow, but I never encountered that effect. So I'm curious as to what that actually, what, what was going to be coming to me later if I didn't die of being frozen and starving. Hell is what is going to be coming to you later if you do that. It starts off with intermittent deafness. That sort of sounds like you've been submerged. That's the best way I can explain it to people. And it goes off a little bit <laughs> and then it keeps going off and then eventually it's gone. You throw up as well. I threw up a few times. Your vision goes. It is not a good way to go. However, what they've done is because obviously there's so much snow around, they've sped it up so you suffer the effects almost immediately so if you're running low on hydration you can't just go oh i know i'll just get a little bit of snow it'll last me until the next town you will suffer those effects before you get to that next town it is very quick you need to know what mm. you're doing wow so is that the the uh is that the heavy metal poisoning that they were talking about yes oh, yeah. and you need chelating tablets to treat or prevent so you can get snow and you pick snow up maybe in a flask or a bottle or a vodka bottle which they've added now and you sort of scoop it all up and then once you've sort of got that there you add your chelating tablets and then it's safe to drink before then yeah just avoid it i was on one of the islands and i was dying of dehydration had no way of getting any kind of water or drink so i thought i would you know, eat some snow. Well, it's okay. You know, like other illnesses, I can get to possibly a medical facility and treat it. Nope. I made it to the mainland with my boat. And I pretty much beached the boat so far up. I don't think anyone's going to get off that beach. And I started running around looking for it. It is not a fun way to go. I definitely agree on that one. <laughs> But it's such a good addition and it's a clever addition as well because when you're in those mountains and you, you need something, the temptation is always there and you always think, can I just take a little bit of that? Can I just last until? And you can't. <laughs> like, it's such a good addition. Wonderful. So poison snow, deafness, blurred vision, eventual death, freezing, starvation, frozen food. So what are the exciting parts? <laughs> I think it's probably still the environmental storytelling. I spoke about this before the map was out and I said I was really looking forward to it and I've just never seen anything as well done as it in this type of hardcore game. This is a world that you'd expect to see in like an RPG, you know, where people actually live there or there's an active thing going on or maybe you're in Resident Evil 4, for example. Like, there's just so much stuff here that complements the idea that this was a working place filled with people living their daily lives and then everything went to hell but also and something that is extremely underrated and something that i absolutely need to bring up here is the sound design like when you land on that coast regardless of where you are every sound is different it feels unique i honestly didn't know how much of a difference this would make until i landed in sakal and i'm like wow Okay, the seagulls, the owls, the croak of the boats, the grass when the wind starts to pick up because a blizzard's coming. Even things like silos make a big clanking sound when you walk past them. And let me tell you, if you're not expecting it, it can make you jump. It just brings it all to life. I love it. So you mentioned some of the points of interest that I know have been talked about, the, the springs and uh, a few other things. What other interesting things did you find on your adventures? So there's the Rata Domes, which apparently there is a large one and there are some small ones that you can find. Of course, like you said, the hot springs, but there's also the volcano. Now, I'm not going to tell you what's inside of it, <laughs> folks, because I want you to figure that yourself. But let's just go to say the view was breathtaking from up there. It was absolutely gorgeous. Always, I think you have a pretty good perspective on what you think about the breathtaking views around the map. I am honestly so taken aback by it. I just spent the whole time taking screenshots. I've been sending them to people, people who don't even play DayZ. I'm like, wow, look at this. And they're like, wow, that's really good. Where are you? I'm like, in my room. Um, but everywhere has a picturesque view. There are valleys, there are passes, there are like cliff faces that you can sort of see in the distance. And you can go everywhere as well. Everywhere you see is a place that you can go. Not all of the places have interesting spots to visit however most of them do have little sites you especially find a lot of like military sites and stuff around the mountains especially in the snowy regions there's a prison that you can find as well there are lots of little hamlets around that are villages and that's another thing is you get a lot of 
of uh, around the coast especially terraced villages so all the houses are stacked up on completely different levels some are on rocks some are on hills some are really low some are built into the side of the hills it just all comes together quite nice and all of it makes for an excellent screenshot you can send and confuse family and friends with one of the other things I noticed running around on the coast, speaking of all these cool mechanics and stuff, is I kept running into the same infected over and over again. And this is the infected from Shinaris on the coastline. The old lady, the guy in the red tracksuit. <laughs> like, I was encountering three or four or five of them in a small radius area. And aside from the look of them, I was kind of hoping they were going to at least touch the the AI behavior mechanics of the infected. That's been a you know a long uh, sore point with uh, Daisy itself is trying to update those to make them a little bit more dynamic, and you know they seem to behave exactly the same, all the same patterns that I was used to uh, being able to follow to uh, defeat them were all the same. So that was a little bit disappointing that they weren't able to do something in that space. I think what they've done with the infected, and I could be absolutely miles off the mark here, but you know how they've sort of adjusted the loot to be more Eastern in its look and its style, so now you find more tracksuits and vodka bottles? I think they've tried to do it with the infected as well. I might be completely wrong, but it did seem like I was fighting the same infected over and over. I think I have a clip of fighting like three or four of that woman in red, so there was a lot of repetition in that particular area. I think Daisy Frostline is going to be a great addition to anybody's library who really enjoys Daisy. It's going to be a little bit harder on people just getting into Daisy, but I don't think it's so hard they won't get the hang of it after a couple of tries. This isn't a super punishing map. I do think that there are mistakes you're going to make, but it's like Shinar Slavonia. It just takes a couple of deaths in the game to get used to it, to start hitting your stride. I think you're going to have to worry about the other elements of PvP and everything else. I love how you gradually from the coast and go all the way up to the mountains, even the volcano, you start going from this dirty, sandy kind of look to more of a clean, crisp snow. And it gets thicker and thicker as you go up. You can actually see, and maybe not even realize, the transition between frosted trees to fully covered trees in this deep snow. And actually just like look around and be like, wow, I didn't even realize that like, I had gone into this thick of a snow area. Overall, I think while the frost mechanics, such as temperature and everything else, has been reworked, it's been reworked in a way where it's a way more player friendly and way better than I've ever seen any modded map ever do it. So overall, folks, I think Daisy Frostline is definitely worth it. And I think that all that being true and aside, and aside from my kind of dislike of winter maps, I think the big thing here and the big story is a new map coming to console players. Um, those of us that play only PC, we're pretty spoiled with all the mods and lots of different maps in whatever state they are. But the console players are have really been limited to just the two maps that are available. So this opens up a whole new world for them, both with the the winterization and all the components you, you mentioned there, but also just the fact that it's a new map. I think that is gigantic. Well, to get my overview of Sakao, you could probably just check out the video in the top right, where I do a full comprehensive breakdown of everything, basically. If you look at it from the perspective of creators, if you have one or two creators working together, which is independent modders, they make something spectacular. But if you have a whole bunch of creators put together in a room, this is what you get. And I think that's what's happened here. But folks, overall, that has been our viewpoint and first impressions on Daisy Frostline. Thank you guys very much for watching the State of Survival podcast to talk for now. Cheers, everybody.